Today we're working on an extremely rare Avenger 400. This appeared in a video a couple months ago and I picked it up at an auction for fairly cheap and I've been meaning to work on it, just haven't got the time, but I figured now's a good time and I bring you guys along with me. I've already started disassembling it a little bit because I figured the easiest way to get to this Kohler engine is just to take off the plastics, well in this case they're fiberglasses because it's a 1983 and There we go. Now you can see it's construction. Now these were originally three wheelers um, and they didn't make very many of them. They made them in the early 80s to compete with you know the Hondas, Yamaha, Suzuki's, um, stuff like that. And they made them in a three wheeler and I think this is the very first and they maybe only made it for a year or two four wheeler version. And if you look at the steering, this has absolutely horrible steering because the way they don't have these at in any sort of angle, generally, you know, I'm not a steering expert, but you want the uh, the kingpin essentially to point towards the center of the tire. Because if not, every bump, if you hit a bump on this side, it's going to cause the unit to steer. And this one actually, this tire actually has to push forward. It actually doesn't pivot on itself. Where if you have the kingpin actually sitting down in the center, it will actually stay in place and just turn where these tires got to move forward and back so that's going to be a fun thing to drive with but being probably one of the very first four wheelers ever ever made this is probably this is as far as i can tell in 83 84 um before honda and them started even releasing four wheelers i mean they didn't really start releasing them they didn't stop making three wheelers till 87 or so i think was the last year we got a uh as just a Garden tractor, Kohler K181, which is about an eight horsepower. Typical thing you'd find in any garden tractor of the 70s or so, early 80s, nicer stuff. So they put a nicer engine in it. Um, electric start only, no pole start. Uh, upon looking at it, I originally when I got this, I didn't think that, I thought this was just some sort of bracket because it's just flimsy. But this is actually the gear shift. So this actually shifts it from, I'm assuming forward to reverse. Um, when I played around with it, it'll be forward to reverse. One little band brake. There is absolutely no brakes on the front. Um, looks like I'm missing the air filter. Um, just the air filter and little uh, housing over, which isn't a big deal. Then over here, we're just going to have a centrifugal clutch. Um, I haven't even looked in here, so that's what I'm assuming. Now, 99% positive, but you're going to find out with me. So there's just going to be a big snowmobile style belt. Yep, it's greasy. Maybe not. Just a snowmobile, a snowmobile style centrifugal clutch, so it has essentially an infinite amount of gears, which makes it nice. It's actually a, a higher end thing. That's not bad. So this is the first me turning the engine too, and it actually turns actually very nice and easy. Feels like it got good compression, so that's good. So pulling out the old battery, got a little glimpse of when it was last played with, and I got a February of um, 98 battery in here, so. Uh, it's probably last at least attempted to be started in 98 whether they got it started or not because there's no air filter housing which generally signifies they were spraying starter fluid in there to try to get it running and just left everything and considering they left it without the air filter i'm assuming they didn't even get it running then they kind of just gave up on it so the battery was just kind of hanging there and these cables were all just completely ripped out so i actually just put new cables on so first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in a good battery put in a good battery we're going to put a little fuel in there crank it see if there's spark well before we put the fuel in we're going to crank it see if there's spark and then we'll put some fuel in there and see if we can get her to fire off before i check spark I'll remove the spark plug and that actually looks pretty dang good but I actually just want to pour a little bit of oil down in there. Uh, we've got some two stroke gas here. Let's put a little dab there. That's better. And that's fire. Good 
running engine. There's a lot of compression there, so good deal. So now I really lucked out because that gas tank is absolutely spotless. It looks like a little bit of rust right there, but it's not. It's just uh, barely, barely surface rust. This thing has leaked out all of its fuel, which is great. So I'm hoping the inside of the carburetor looks the same. These fuel lines are completely rotted, so I'll just throw a new fuel line on there first. But I'm going to pull that carburetor off, clean it, and then she should be able to fire and actually pretty much go. There's no choke. The choke is missing. I'll have to um, figure a uh, choke out. Just and you know, There's a, a hole in the side of the, uh, the housing right there that uh, is a choke thing. So they pulled that off. Probably trying to get this thing running. They never were. But we'll do that. Clean the carburetor now. Carburetor's all clean, remounted. I have new fuel lines, clean ethanol free gas, and I've blown on the gas tank uh, with my mouth, just pressurized it to force gas up into the carburetor. So that should be completely full. Let's put it down on choke. Um, this is the throttle, so I'm going to hold the throttle to uh, fast idle, and we're going to try to crank it up. down here I just decided to make sure the points were nice and clean and they are and I believe those are completely original points there's a little hole right here that I had to put that you would need to actually adjust it otherwise you would never actually be able to actually even tighten them on without removing everything else so I'm pretty sure this is still running the original points and they've they've never ever been touched so that's a testament to points I had to order some parts um, the carburetor was leaking a little bit so I ended up having to get a uh, needle, little rubber tip needles, and so I put a new needle in it. Um, there was no air filter, so I put an air filter on. There was no air filter cap, so I ended up just bending up a piece out of diamond plate aluminum and polishing it up all purdy like um, There was no choke or no choke cable, so I ended up having to buy this choke cable, which is actually a nice one, and then I had to make a little bracket that goes from this bolt over and over here that's the closest thing I could find online of what it originally kind of looked like and it kind of made sense so everything's just kind of loosely put on the body's not even bolted down just sitting there the seat's just sitting there, handlebars are just barely on, but we should be able to test it and see if we can make it move under its own power for the first time in 20 some odd years. <laughs> so this is your uh, forward reverse lever. Uh, that should be forward. Yep. That should be reversed. I need to fix those handlebars. It's all welded up crooked. It actually rubs either the mounts right here and right up there are off, or this is off. I think this is bent a little bit, or the bracket's bent trying to measure to see what's crooked what's making that steering column so not centered and these little mounts right here mount the front and then there's a little tab right here and right there they mount the back and they're all square with each other I thought maybe they were moved because there's a big old nasty looking weld down here but it looks fine the steering column I can tell gets a little bit of a bend but still doesn't account for being over that far but then I noticed that this bracket right here looks like it got a bigger weld on it. And if you come back here and look, this side more than likely broke off at one point and they just re-welded it. This should be pushed up a little bit and that would push, shouldn't move it a bunch, but it should move it kind of that direction. And then if I re-band it, it'll move it that direction. So I'll just throw a big pipe wrench on there and try to bend it back and cut that and re-weld it out where it should be. 
I think it got it pretty dang, pretty straight. It's hard to tell. Put the body back on. It's all welded back up. There we go. She polished up real nice since it's just fiberglass and gel coat, which is really resilient. But that took a shine. That's no wax, no nothing. That took a shine extremely well. Have the headlights all wired up. You can see the the choke and the so I got it wired up just to have the headlights on whenever the thing is running. The choke and everything's in the original position. But you can see the rack. The rack is a little ugly on it. I don't know, but it came with it. It looks good. The seat, the original seat's in decent shape. That's one little split, but I put some saddle soap on it, and this is really, really nice, actually, uh, um, vinyl. So it's way thicker than you find on new stuff. So that'll hold up good. I made some mounting tabs for it. The seat just doesn't fall off. But look at those fenders and stuff shine. Um, painted everything up just a little bit, just to make it look pretty. Reinforced this flimsy, uh, gear shift bracket just welding a, a brace on it so now it actually shifts a lot better not sure if I'm gonna put a knob or something on that it's probably what was on it originally Kohler runs fantastic painted the rims up still has the original dry rotted tires that I put tire jacked in but they're they haven't lost a drop of air so that's impressive so it's not getting tires right now but it will pretty soon so So while other people were buying cheap Japanese three-wheelers, a USA company was forward-thinking and making a four-wheeler before they ever came out with such a thing. Steering is a little scary, like I thought it'd be, kind of grabs a little bit, especially having no suspension when you're going through a dip and turning at the same time, kind of pulls you through it and kind of grabs you, so you gotta always have a good grip on those handlebars. It doesn't have very high top speed since it just has a Kohler engine that's governed out at about 3600 RPMs, but you really don't want to take those much higher than that. So it only goes maybe 30, so 30 miles per hour, but you really want to want to take it faster than that. Um, I'll put a lot of data, all the information, prices that this originally cost, and any history that I find down in the video description, so check that out. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like working on old crap, make sure you subscribe. See ya, bye.